Hello, I'm Ann Del Castillo, Commissioner of the New York City Mayor's Office of Media and Entertainment, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to the 2021 Industry Forum at the New York International Children's Film Festival. We at the Mayor's Office of Media and Entertainment are proud to be a founding partner of this important event. Our agency is charged with supporting New York City's creative economy, film, television, theater, music, advertising, publishing, digital content, and nightlife. Our Office of Film, Theater, and Broadcasting provides support for on-location filming throughout New York City. NYC Media operates the largest municipal broadcast television and radio network in the country. And our Office of Nightlife works to support a thriving nighttime industry, which has given birth to so many of our most influential cultural movements. Through our programs and initiatives, we support industry and workforce development in order to ensure access and opportunities for a diverse talent pool. Together, these sectors represent over 150 billion in economic output annually and over half a million jobs for New Yorkers. But more than that, they define New York City as a global creative capital. As someone who started at Sesame Street, children's programming is particularly important to me. But also as an only child of single of a single immigrant mother, I experience the power of children's media. My mother likes to joke that Sesame Street was my babysitter, but really what was important was that I saw my experience as an urban American of immigrant heritage reflected in programs like Sesame Street, Mr. Rogers, and Electric Company. So I thank the New York International Children's Film Festival for their vision and commitment in presenting this forum. And I thank all of you for being here and engaging in these important conversations. So with that, I now turn it over so that you can begin our program. I'm Maria Cristina Villasenor. I'm the programming director for the New York International Children's Film Festival, or NIGIF, as we like to call it for short. Um, we're so excited to welcome you to today's panel, Going Global, which explores diverse storytelling through international productions and co-productions. And we have some amazing conversations uh, for you today. Um, it's a truly glo globe trotting panel uh, with panelists joining us from the Netherlands, from France and from Guadeloupe. I'm so excited to introduce everybody shortly, um, but I'll tell you a little bit about how um, today's conversation is gonna unfold. It's going to unfold in two parts, and it's the fourth of five talks in NICIF's Industry Forum series toward an inclusive future, um, which is part of our mission to support artful, intelligent, and diverse films for young audiences. And so today's conversation going global is of course a key part of that goal. Um, today's talk is also co-presented with the acclaimed Dutch Festival Syndicate. Uh, super exciting and we're really honored to be working with them. Um, and it'll be made up, as I said, of two half hour talks um, on the NYCF Grand Prize winning short and feature films of the 2021 festival. And they've been acclaimed um, across the globe as well in other uh, festivals and instances. Um, and we're going to be beginning with a conversation on Vanille the French animated production with stories set in Guadeloupe and followed by the stunning live action feature Boulalo and a conversation on its production with the filmmaker, producer and Cinekid. Um, and Boulalo was filmed in Curaçao and co-produced by the Netherlands in Curaçao. Um, so um, I also want to go and thank all of our um, amazing folks that made this possible. Um, all of you, of course, for joining us, our esteemed panelists, which we're so honored to have talking with us today. Um, and also, um, especially to our founding partner, which you heard from, the Mayor's Office of Media and Entertainment, which is really important in supporting um, all kinds of initiatives to bring more folks into the field. And of course, amazing productions throughout New York City. Um, and also a very big 
thanks to Unifrons um, for their support of the full industry series. They've been great supporters throughout and we're really thrilled and honored to be um, focusing on this wonderful French production today and to talk um, in depth about it. Um, so as I said, um, another huge honor for us is to be working with Cinekid. Um, it is the premier festival for young audiences in Europe. And it also has a really robust industry event, Cinekid for Professionals. Um, we're thrilled that the program head, Nienke Polsma, will be joining us after the Vani presentation. And she's gonna lead the conversation on um, Bulado, uh, which first took place at the Cinekid for Professionals script lab. Um, and tell you more about Cinekid's offering. So hello, Nyeke, welcome. Hi everyone, thank you Maria for inviting me. <laughs> oh, it's so fantastic to have you here and you're already here a lot more from Nyeke. She's also gonna be sharing um, a bit more about um, the breadth of what uh, Cinekid does. It's a fantastic festival, industry, um, just all kinds of initiatives um, and tell you more uh, specifically about Cinekid for Professionals, which I think will be interesting, really interesting for a number of you out there. Um, and then, of course, uh, lead us into that conversation. Um, it has been a pre-recorded conversation, uh, but we're going to have um, uh, Nienka also join us at the end and the Vani filmmakers. So we're going to welcome all of your questions throughout and make sure we capture them um, and, and answer those um, wonderful burning questions, no doubt, on um, all the creativity that went into these works. Um, I also want to tell you, we want to invite you to connect and participate throughout today's conversation. You can drop your thoughts into the chat at any time, which I'm sure you already know, and use the Q&A section to ask our panelists your questions. We'll collect them so that we can um, uh, turn this over to them um, at the end of the conversations. Um, and let's see, what else do I need to tell you? Um, there is a Google contact sheet. Um, it's been a really lively thing throughout our presentations um, for um, filmmakers, emerging folks, um, everyone who's interested to connect and engage. So it has uh, contacts from throughout this uh, series of five events. Um, it is a publicly shared document, so make sure you're comfortable with that, but it is really lively and rich in terms of people sharing their work, their portfolios, uh, what have you. So please feel free to join that. Um, we'll drop it in the chat if it's not in there already. Um, okay, let's see. Um, I think the last part for logistics is just to remind you, the last panel is going to happen next Thursday, the 27th. Uh, it's our closing panel on uh, super exciting and essential, a solid foundation funding kids media. So please um, think about joining us for that if you haven't signed up already. Um, and now at last, it is my great pleasure to kick off the conversation by introducing today's panelists. Um, as I said, Nika Posma is going to be joining us later, so um, I am um, really excited to dive into that a bit later. And now I will switch over to introducing our wonderful French panelists. And I'm going to be starting by introducing um, Guillaume Loran, who is the filmmaker of Vani. Uh, born in Guadeloupe, uh, Guillaume Loran studied animation and went on to work for Folimage and Cartoon Saloon. So very impressive. Um, uh, collaborations and work um, already, of course. Um, and also um, very exciting that um, his first short, which he directed, Vani, uh, a colorful modern day tale taking place in his beloved Guadeloupe, uh, was the winner of the 2021 Nike Brand Prize for Animated Short and also has been doing tremendously um, internationally. So welcome, Young. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. It's nice. I'm really happy to be here. Fantastic, we're happy to have you. And also we're really honored to have the participation of Jean-Charles Moboti Malolo. Uh, Jean-Charles is a French choreographer, dancer, animator, and filmmaker of Cameroonian descent. Um, and following his animation studies, he went on to direct a number of acclaimed short films, including Make It Soul, which was recently nominated for the César for best animated short film. Um, so also mm -hmm. incredibly impressive. Um, and he served as the chief animator on Vanny. So welcome Jean-Charles. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for having me and thank you for this uh, beautiful presentation. <laughs> we're excited to hear from you all. And you know, we'd love to hear about collaboration. So we're excited for you to be in dialogue. And now I'm very honored to be uh, welcoming Regina Le Guibon. Um, after successfully navigating, <laughs> <laughs> we try best. We are an international festival. <laughs> yeah, wow, I'm impressed. Um, after and now I'm going to ask you to say my last name at some point. <laughs> oh my god, terrible for that. 
no, no worries. Uh, we, we, uh, we meant it when we said going global. After successfully navigating the tech and finance worlds, Regina entered the media and education sector in 2003 by founding the impressive Hildegard Group. Uh, and it's a portfolio of amazing media and animation organizations. And he now serves as the president of the animation company Folimage. Um, Nike has had a long and wonderful um, relationship with Folimage and it's just a wonderfully artistic and independent vision. And so I'm thrilled to now turn it over to you, Reginald, to uh, welcome us and say a bit more about uh, your work. Yep. Thank you very much for having us uh, today and tonight. Um, uh, tonight for us here in France and for you, it's early afternoon. For Thanks for joining us. Um, I will thank the festival also for um, giving us the grand prize. Uh, I, I thank you very much. We were very honored, um, the whole team, um, and we were very happy to be recognized for this prize. And, and especially during this um, year, which is a grand year for Felimage because it's our 40th birthday, you know, we're the oldest uh, studio in uh, of animation in France, still in existence. Um, we've been running for 40 years. Uh, we were founded in 1981, um, really like a like a U.S. startup in, in a garage with by by, by a, a bunch of hippies <laughs> in south of France <laughs> in a small town called Valence, and it, it started as a non for profit, which is uh, quite astonishing. It had to become a for profit uh, institution. Uh, because they wanted to finance their uh, first uh, feature movie that they did um, in the late 90s, early 2000. And from there, uh, we continued to grow. And, and the founder, Jacques-Rémy Girard, always and wanted to, um, to make sure that um, the place was a voice for independent artists. And so it's more, more than a studio, it's a community. Uh, as you said, you see uh, Jean-Charles is also a director, but in this movie, he was the chief of animation. He worked with his friend Guillaume, and next time it will be Guillaume that will be working on Jean-Charles' movie and, and etc. And then they have this wonderful community where all the, these great talents and, and directors work together on each other and help each other and give their visions and exchange and all that. that all that stuff, and we try to uh, make sure that happens, this dialogue between the authors. And so that was Jacques Rimi's uh, vision, and I tried to prepare you uh, that, and that's my, my goal, is to make sure that uh, that vision that he had 40 years ago continues, and I think we're being successful. He founded, um, and next to our school, there's a, 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 a great animation school called La Poudrière, where a lot of uh, international talents came out from. And we make sure that uh, it, it, it you know, continues. Um, and I'm gonna make um, a, a call for project, if you permit me, because we have a, a resonance that we've been, I mean, almost 25 years, 20, uh, almost 25 to 30 years, we have a re in-house in resonance. Um, we ask, uh, we try to promote and help a young uh, international uh, director to come into Valence uh, and we help him pr pr produce his first or second um, short movie. And we have a lot of famous um, um, uh, partners in France and TV stations and, and subsidies for the French government and all that stuff uh, to make it happen. And unfortunately, in those 30 years almost, we never had uh, an American resident. So uh, to all uh, American residents, please come out to our website, folimage.fr, and please don't be, uh, you know, shy. Uh, you can come to France. <laughs> there, you know, we're, it's a great community, and we would love to have a, a young American artist to able to have that voice, um, a different voice. We had people from China, from Iran, from all kinds of Mexico, all kinds of different countries. And we would be delighted to have, to have a, a U.S. person. Um, I don't know what can I add. Um, uh, you know, I was moved by this project. Um, it doesn't seem like it, but my mom is black. She's from Haiti, um, and so uh, this uh, this project talked to me uh, very, very specially because uh, I have a mom who, who who doesn't like her curly hair. <laughs> 
<laughs> trying to like a lot of black women to make it really stick, uh, you know, make it sure that. that... <laughs> so uh, I thought it was a funny story, but it's a true uh, story about difference. Um, and I think uh, Guillaume and, and Jean Charles will talk uh, uh, grandly about it, but it really appealed to me uh, as a person. So I really wanted to support this project. Um, the, the design, I was in love with the design. I was in love with the fact that um, the backgrounds were in live action with, with all, you know, and Guillaume is showing us the beauty of his background already live. Yeah. For all of us, I mean, it's better than my bedroom. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is my toilet, actually. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's more glamorous. Um, and so we we wanted really to 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 create this new innovative. We're we're sort of like a studio that really sticks to the author. Um, there's not a style, and and different. You know, a Ghibli movie looks like a Ghibli movie. Uh, I'm sorry, maybe there, there were some connoisseurs who will say, oh, there's little differences, but still you, you can see it looks like a Ghibli movie. A Pixar movie looks like a Pixar movie and, 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 and it's great, it's fantastic, but it has its signature. And what is fantastic with Fulimage, the signature is the, diver the diversity of its talents. And there's no, there's different kind of techniques, different kind of, uh, designs and and that's i would say our signature and so we try to find that and we try to to push that and we sort of a very experimental house um we like to experiment and so sometimes uh, you know it takes time um it takes risk and 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 we like to do that um uh, and it it's sometimes painful for all the teams to make it happen but <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, we're very happy with the results, and um, and um, and that's what we're so proud of is actually of all these movies that we've been doing for so many years, and um, and I thank um, my authors to be so great and to to give so, so much passion to the to the team of Fulimage that tries to surround uh, surround them and help them uh, in their visions. Thank, Thank you so you much, Reginald. Nice. That is so helpful um, and generous oh. of you um, no. to hear. Thank you very much again for, for for inviting me. I don't know if you have a quick question or not for me before I have to jump out because I have to take care of my kids. Uh, <laughs> for Multitasking, for me. very impressive. Uh, um, just uh, if you could repeat one more time the, um, the call for uh, no, artists the, to apply. The, Yes, so please come to our website. So www.folimage.fr, Folimage, F-O-L-I-M-A-G-E. And you will find in English, there's an English version of our website. And um, you just type on the residence and you will have everything. And we would be delighted to have somebody from the United States with a great project and, and, and have them in Valence. And he will have the chance maybe to see uh, Guillaume, uh, Jean-Charles uh, in the hallways and maybe give him some advice and tips. And, may, and who knows, maybe I'll actually help out. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Thank you for sharing that wonderful um, ethos and spirit of collaboration. Um, and I would say that the one um, organizing uh, consistent style of Full Image is that there is artistry and there is heart. Um, yeah. We just have so yeah. many wonderful films um, that yeah. audiences have loved over the years. So yeah. with that, so, I'm going to turn it over. Thank you, yeah. Regina. We'll let you attend bye to bye. your children. Enjoy. Hi to the kids. And enjoy. Bye bye. Uh, Salut. À la prochaine. À bientôt. Salut. Salut. Je vous en passe. À, à bientôt. bientôt. Bye-bye. So. Um, so yeah, I'm going to kick it over to you, Guillaume and Jean-Charles. Um, you know, Vanille has so much heart. It's such a wonderful story um, that is um, relatable to so many of us um, sort of thinking about our immigrant roots existing in two different cultures. It's such a wonderful mm -hmm. representation of um, you know, black culture and the specificities of that storyline. Um, and I would love to just start with you, Guillaume, and ask about um, kind of what the, yes. the, the first seed or spark was for you in creating this story. Okay, so uh, for me, I was very, uh, since I came to France to study animation, I wanted to do a, 
um, I, I wanted to direct films, but I didn't know how to do so. I had to go through all the process about learning how to be a technician and all that, which was very cool. But since the beginning, I wanted to tell stories that was taking place in the Caribbean because this is where I grew up and this is where I developed my, let's say, my imaginary world. And uh, I was a bit frustrated because I, I couldn't see it on screen. And I was like, well, I just have to do it myself, I guess. But it was very, with a lot of passion and I was very happy to do it. So the first idea of Vanille came up in my mind and um, at the school La Poudrière, where I studied, which is very close to, um, to Folimage. And uh, this is where we had to find like three stories to make a short film. And the story of this little girl popped up in my mind. And it was also very influenced by what my mom used to tell me when I was a kid. So she would tell me tales, like a bit scary tales, you know, what, ha what's, what happens in the Caribbean is all kind of creatures, a bit creepy, but also very funny at the same time. And I wanted to tell stories about that. And uh, this little girl came up in the school and I let it grow in my mind, you know, I was working on different films. I was working on Jean Charles film, which was called The Sense of Touch, a very beautiful film. And, um, and while working on all those films, uh, the, creat uh, the creature, the, 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 the character was really growing and growing and the stories would take really a big place. It was so big that I had to stop working with other people and focus on my film. And uh, this is how it all started. Yeah. Thanks to the school, that is a place where you have the time to develop your own world and to test and try out stuff. So I did three short films there and each one of them talks about the Caribbean in a way. Okay, so you, that's uh, <laughs> great grounding in terms of, you know, and, and your being there obviously is already giving yes. us a hint of the visual style, but I would love to hear um, from you, Guillaume, and also Jean Charles of how you um, first started um, kind of creating the look and feel of the film and how your collaboration was in terms of really thinking about the visual elements. Um, okay, I start well, with okay. the visuals, Jean Charles? Yeah, sure, sure. No, go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, you can speak now. <laughs> it was like that all the time. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's all the time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Exactly. So just to introduce it, to introduce it, um, I wanted to. So uh, as I said, as a joke, but it's a bit true. I'm not very good at drawing back backgrounds. So I and I really wanted people to 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 meet the island where I grew up. I really wanted them to share with me the passion and the love I had for the place. So I thought I might as well just film it and add the characters in it since it has been done before like with uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, you know, this film gave me the, the, the feel to, to, to maybe the, to feel the right to do it. And I really like this kind of imagery because it mixes uh, imaginary and reality. And in the Caribbean tale, we like to make people believe that the story really happened somewhere you already know, like close to that mango tree, you know, behind the church. And here is where the devil hides the keys. And as a kid, you go and you look for the key and the key is not there. So it's all about making people believe it really happened. So this is why I use also this technique because it was very help helpful. And also um, to do that, it, we, we needed to, to also show the people of the island and to make them, and we needed to believe that they were real. And this is how we worked. We tried to work with Jean-Charles about keeping the blackness of the behavior of the characters, right? Would you agree? Yeah, true, exactly. That's yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> no, <not it. laughs> All right, Jean-Charles, I'll try to get a little more out of you. Um, I have seen your uh, work. Um, I saw you give an amazing presentation um, when you uh, were screening uh, Make It Soul at NC and had this wonderful explosion of dance and movement come out of the office. It was out of the office, out of the audience um, yeah, as true. he was presenting this film. And it was such a natural and wonderful celebration I think of, of your work which crosses over between dance and film and it's all about movement and Bunny has such a great energy how did um, that kind of um, background express itself in how you uh, ran through the story of Bunny and Bunny you know she starts out um, coming from Paris and and kind of connecting with her family and there's just an energy throughout that's great how does your background sort of feed into how you craft that story um, that's a very, very good question. And I, I've been thinking about it in a way, um, like, do, does it really, uh, comes from somewhere when you think about it for a moment and then you say, okay, I have the right path and I'm going to try to give it to the, to the director or to the animators. But I think it was more of, um, 
sensation, some, uh, something like this, uh, very visceral, I'd say. Um, since both Guillaume and I uh, are from, I'd say, the same background, from having uh, mixed culture parents, so we actually tried to discuss what we've been living as a child, having these kinds of hair and uh, what we have today. And I think our collaboration was more on the sensation and how we would uh, you know, try and understand the, I'd say the, the deepest meaning of the, the characters so uh, I'm talking about this, about animation and the movement, because it was really the roots of how the movement were created. We didn't really talk about like, okay, Guillaume asked, asked me, uh, how would you see this character moving? It was more about who is she and who are they? And uh, where do they come from? And I think the Caribbean has this very close link from Africa. Um, so we we really tried to connect to to our roots, I'd say, to our family, and just trying to be open and aware of how people walks and moves and talks around her around around us. Sorry. So um, so it was more like this, and uh, I didn't really um, have this level of comprehension of you know uh, I love dance. And I love movement and I'm going to try and mix both of those uh, very important things uh, for me. And I'm going to try to apply them to, to the characters. Um, I think it's more uh, of a magical thing, I, I think. Uh, not saying that, oh, it's magic. It's just uh, more of a link um, that's close from intuition. intuition. That's something that we overthink. Uh, for instance, when I started to mix animation and dance, uh, it was something uh, that I didn't really th thought about first. And once I realized that I've done this for my uh, graduation film, I felt like, oh, uh, uh, am I going to be this uh, black guy that loves hip hop dance and that does uh, dance in animation? And that for uh, people, I'm going to be labeled as such forever kind of but then i realized that i was this black guy that loves hip hops and dance and so i <laughs> needed to to embrace and just to you know to stop um, trying to control everything even though i'm this control freak uh, i assume but then i i, I just needed to to let it flow <laughs> and to to <laughs> that's true but you know to just to, to let it flow and to to try to um, can I say infuse as a bag of tea? Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, so yeah, that's how we did things regarding Make It Soul and how we danced. It was something that, uh, it was the same thing. It was just flowing. And with Guillaume, uh, Guillaume is a dancer actually. He didn't say it, but he is. And uh, movement is, is really part of how we, you know, how, how we think how behave, life, yeah. how we behave, yeah, how how we how we are. Oh, yeah, it's crazy. So so um, so it was it was simple in a way. Um, yeah, it was no, a very long I'm, answer. I'm, sorry. No, what, no, go ahead. No, it's really cool. I like I like it because what he doesn't say also is that because he dance and because I love dance too, you have a trust in the, in the way he you feel the movement in the way you observe how people are, how people behave and move. And I knew right away that he, he had the knowledge and the, and the feeling of giving life to, I will say to black characters because it's not that easy actually. Although um, most of the animators were not black, but it was very important to me that we keep that because it's not the same way of, be, of moving and stuff like that. And, uh, and for me, that was very important and also um, you brought something to the film that I didn't expect as much is that I have a tendency to make goofy characters, you know, and not take things really seriously. And he, he told me, no, man, it has to be, it has to be really um, believable. You know, the characters have to be really, we need them to be really here. And he, 
you know, he make them more with actual elbows. He was really there to make them <laughs> yeah, in true. the flesh. So we keep the, <clears throat> it's true, right? You keep the at yeah. anatomy. It was, it had to be very strong in anatomy. They had to be there for real. And I had a tendency to make them really, whoa, 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 ha, ha, and, uh, and get away with it. But he was like, no, there's some really important things where emotion is important. And for that, you need the characters to be strong and solid, you know? And that was what I needed for this film. <laughs> I'm so happy you gave it to us. Even though we didn't have much time to work on that. It's true that we didn't have much time. It was very sure. on the... Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also I, I just yeah. want to jump in and um, link it back to the kid element because I think that what you're talking about in terms of being sensitive, you know, Jean-Charles, your sensibility to movement regardless um, plays in there and Guillaume, you're wanting to represent a character. It both has this, you know, liveliness and and the and the goofiness and the element of fantasy in terms of the storytelling of Guadeloupe, but it's also a story of Annie, a young girl who comes from Paris and, uh, you know, lands with her family in Guadeloupe and she feels like the outsider, right? So she's much more kind of constrained and sort mm -hmm. of thinking about a character in those ways, I think is really impressive. And I would, of, of, you know, her kind of being like enclosed and tight and anxious about who she is and starts to, um, the story sort of starts to flow and, and, and loosen up from there. Um, so I would love to know just how you two maybe approach um, thinking about storytelling um, about kids, about young people um, and sort of what the importance is for you both, um, both, you know, on that side. And also if there's something that um, you felt it was really um, important for you to represent in terms of, um, you know, just expanding on the black cultural representation that you felt like kids don't typically get to see on screen or don't get to see enough of. Okay, I go first. Okay. Yeah, um, sure. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. So, um, of course, the kids was very important because I think I never really quite grew up. I'm suffering from the Peter Pan syndrome, I guess. And so, for me, I needed to see the the what as a kid what I wanted to see. So you kind of have to go to a kid level in in your, which is really a good thing, I think, to do that. And uh, okay. and um, it. So it also had to do with like, I am from, I was born in the Caribbean. Vani is not my story. I grew up here and Jean-Charles grew up in France. So he, he is more connected to the Vani that I'm talking about. So that was also was very important uh, for the, the way she would behave, you know, as an urban girl, which I'm really not, well, okay. And, um, and um, <laughs> but the thing is that it was very important for me to show um, like, I don't know how to say in English, what other cultures go through, through their own eyes. It's like you have to show what people go through, but you have to ask them to tell you about it. Like a, a lot of people make films about other cultures, like in France, and they don't really come from this place. And they often go to the know enough. Vani for me is, the, is, the, is my first chance to uh, talk about something that I know that I grew up there and it's a, it's a really big, it's really a big chance to tell your own life through your own words and that was what well, that was what was important for me to pass to the kids because they're the one who watch really animation and they're the one who construct themselves with these um, cartoons and animation and it was very important that this story was mainly for kids even though we thought about the adults and the grown-ups also yeah <laughs> I don't know what to say. Um, yeah. Yeah. Do you agree? It, it, I agree. I agree. Yeah. One hundred percent. And I'm. Uh, that it, it's really funny because I've been thinking about uh, how on earth would you write for children, and I really feel like I'm not really the right fit to do this for now. I'm gonna try and uh, make my way uh toward this goal writing for children's but then um i actually have um this idea where uh, i realize with my nephews with my son now he's very tiny yet but still but um i can feel it that you don't really necessarily need to talk to children to talk to children i mean you you, you don't you you don't have to wear this kind of clothes or shoes you know, uh, and, and be really smooth and um, having this way with words. Uh, anyways, th th that's the way I'm trying to behave and we're trying to behave. 
I mean, as a parent, uh, while parenting. Uh, but then for storytelling, I think it's the same kind of uh, approach. Um, like you, you, you don't, you don't need to, um, you don't need to, to, yeah, you don't need to really uh, talk to children. You just need to Change have the right. Sorry. No, sorry. I was, yeah, I was trying to reinforce what you were saying, but you were good. Yeah. Sorry, keep going. Okay. <laughs> no, <don't worry. laughs> I just had this uh, leisure moment searching for the right words, mm -hmm. but then, um, yeah, I mean, it's, I really uh, believe in, in the, the, the process. It's like, uh, of course, when you, you can say that, okay, uh, if you're really true to yourself and if you really uh, try and be honest, this will go through and everybody's going to understand. I, I, I think it's a bit pushy because it's not necessarily true. But uh, when you tell a story uh, like Vani, uh, which is very balanced because there is uh, hatred and there is, uh, uh, you know, tension, there is uh, lots of different emotions, yeah, different emotion. And that's the funny thing because uh, writing this kind of film uh, at Fol Image was, I think, one of the main uh, goal, I'd say, because uh, they are a lot uh, kid-oriented. And in France, uh, TV has a lot, uh, I'd say, weight or power to uh, in the decisions. Um, so they would actually drag us, um, you know, in, in, in the side of, you can't, for, for example, there is this scene <clears throat> where uh, uh, the, the, the kids needs to go through the windows uh, to catch the, the, the spirit. But then uh, you don't have, you, you, I mean, it's not that you don't have, you, you're not allowed to make kids going through the windows because if you show this imagery, uh, real kids in real life would go through the window and maybe hurt themselves or whatever, which can be true. But then uh, it's always you have to balance your ideas uh, with uh, um, how they're going to be received by your audience. And I think it was the main, uh, uh, not the main, but it was one of the struggles we had to deal with um, to, 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 to rethink the, um, uh, the storytelling and, uh, and yeah, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of all the place, but, um, one thing that was easy for me as the, uh, animator lead, uh, was the writing because all the great work, uh, Guillaume and, uh, the authors did, uh, was really to serve, uh, what we had to, you know, put in image. And uh, our process was really to, to talk about uh, the, the meaning and the purpose of the, the children in the film and whether or not that's something we would have to go through as a child. I mean, in our childhood, me being from the city uh, and how you would express this in the forest or whatever. And this was really more the conversation we had before uh, while writing and while uh, at, um, working on the animatic, uh, even though I was just, you know, uh, the pain in, I'm sorry, I'm not going to finish were... this. <laughs> <laughs> this. But you, you, the you catch my drift. But... Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, that the uh, approach that you have, that there's both, you know, a joy and a silliness to childhood, but also, um, you know, kids are, kids are of course, um, very perceptive and intelligent. You don't have to mod yeah. yes. modify, modulate yeah. you know, how you yeah. speak exactly. or engage with them. So, um, and Jean Charles, I, I read, uh, sorry, yeah, Jean Charles you. actually really helped us a lot to um, to keep that because sometimes I would go very low on the age of the of the audience. You know, I would I wouldn't dare to go as far as as the film needed, and it would always remind me this is necessary. You can go there. You have to go there because the story needs it. Because the story needs it, and so. If the story needs it, the kids also need to see this kind of scenes, you know? So it was really cool. And this is what he added a lot to animation. Yeah, that's yeah. great advice for us to all think about. You know, if the story needs it, the kids mm -hmm. need it. I love it. So you all obviously have an amazing and perfect <laughs> dialogue and, and collaboration, and we're so grateful to have it. 
Uh, we need to move on to the next panel, but uh, mostly I wanna give our audience a chance to ask you their questions directly. So um, I'm really um, honored to have you and I'm excited to have you back at the end of the Blue Eagle presentation to answer the questions from the audience. Um, so thank you so much, Guillaume and Jean-Charles, and we'll see you soon. Thank you, thank you. See you. Okay. Bye -bye. Thank you, bye-bye, um, see you. Thank you for that great chat. Now, it's really my honor to be introducing, reintroducing Nienke Polsma. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Nienke before she hops on and she's going to um, be um, presenting this conversation, as I said, uh, between the Bulago filmmakers. Hi Nienke, good to see you again. Hi, hi. <laughs> so I'm gonna run through, if you will, just a very brief um, presentation of your very impressive bio. Um, so Nienke Polsmaya serves as the head of Cinekid for Professionals at Cinekid, driving the industry department of the Cinekid Festival. Nienke joined Cinekid in 2015 from the International Film Festival of Rotterdam, so also very impressive, um, where she coordinated Cinemart, the established co-production market of the IFFR and the Rotterdam Lab, the workshop for emerging producers. She's chaired many international juries, selection committees, and boards over the years and acted as a matchmaker for several amazing film projects at different festivals around the world. And again, I'm so glad to have you here and I'm so honored to turn it over to you. Thank you so much for a great introduction, Maria, Christina, fantastic. And thank you again so much for having us here and thank you for um, yeah, making us co-host of this wonderful event. Uh, very proud of this collaboration. Uh, thank you all for listening. Uh, for you, it's, in the, it's the afternoon, but here it's uh, almost nine in the evening. I'll do my best to, uh, <laughs> to not to uh, moan. I will share a little um, uh, presentation about Tineke just to give you an overview of what we do um, at the festival. I will share my screen. Yeah, so the Syndicate Festival and the Syndicate Foundation are actively involving children in high quality media, and that's what we've been doing for over 30 years. And we're really committed to, to stimulate and uh, the stimulative production of this kind of media for children and to let them uh, self contribute also to, this, to its creation. Um, we really uh, have the aim to guiding their media uh, development and helping them to learn to view media critically and expanding their worldview. Um, this year, uh, the 35th festival takes place. Uh, it's a hybrid edition. So we're gonna be around 40, 30 locations in the Netherlands and also online via Cinecap Play, which is a platform we developed last year. Um, our target audience is three to 14 years old. Uh, we have, uh, we show films and series. We have eight competition and 15 awards. Good to mention that our deadlines is uh, to submit your productions is the 1st of July. So please do so if you're still able to. Um, uh, we do workshop and installations. Uh, we have a very big media lab, which is an interactive playground. Um, in total, we have 65,000 festival visits and 130 visits also with our uh, year round activities, which is also educational uh, activities throughout the year, um, workshops, etc. Uh, we show over 500 media productions each year and we have around uh, 600, uh, more than 600 attending professionals. Um, what are we looking for? Just a quick note on that. It's films about children that are targeted for, and suitable for children and where children are driving the narrative. Real, original stories that broaden children's horizons while remaining relatable for a youth audience. We take children serious, um, both as a topic as well as an audience. Um, I love the phrase also just now, uh, you don't talk to children, <laughs> to, like children to children. I think that's really a component of taking them seriously indeed. Um, we take children's films uh, really seriously and as a legitimate form of cinema. It's an audience, it's not a genre. Thank uh, you for professionals, just to highlight um, the international department of the festival. It takes place during the festival in the fall. Uh, we have a junior co-production market, uh, an industry firm, which is a big conference. Uh, we have a screening club. Uh, I tapped into that a little bit later. And we have year round, we have talent development programs. Uh, so the junior co-production market, it's good to mention that the deadline is July 1st, it's coming up. Um, 
it's taking place. Uh, oh, there's an old date there. Sorry, uh, it's it's twenty twenty first and twenty two October uh, this year. Uh, so we have a public pitch, and then we have one to one meetings. Uh, we even involve the audience, so you can also pitch to international children uh, during uh, our event. Um, and it's really to stimulate uh, co-production and the realization of beautiful projects that we believe in and that really fit, fit our mission. Uh, we also grant the Euromash Co-Production Development Award um, uh, and the Film or Post-Production Award during the festival, during the market. The Screening Club is our online video library and it's really a hub for buyers and programmers. And we show over 500 productions uh, from the, this year. So it's really um, out there uh, as a vital hub to present your production. And you can still submit until September this year for that part. We also have several talent development programs, like I just said, the Syndicate Script Lab. Uh, the deadline is 25 May, so next week, so that's quite close, but I really want to mention that. It's, we also have a director's lab since this year, which we're very proud of. The deadline is in December. And we have a national workshop, which is called ZEPDOC Lab, which is a documentary workshop for uh, this audience. Um, so here's again our dates. Hopefully we can welcome you in this fall, hopefully live or online. Uh, um, both is possible this year. Uh, feel free to, to, to drop, me, drop me a line at professionalsyndicate.nl uh, or have a look at syndicate.com. Um, thank you so much. Um, I'm very happy now that we will uh, start about talking about Boulado, which is a fantastic uh, film, uh, which won the grand prize for the future film at New York International Children's Film Festival this year. I'm very proud of this film. It's, it has been supported by us in our Syndicate Script Lab. Uh, so we really were there, um, yeah, hoping, stimulating this project further. Um, Unfortunately, the maker, uh, Ache uh, Yangakong, and the producer, Koji Nelison from Kepler Film, can't be here live today. Um, they are in a very big retreat, writers' retreat in the Swiss Alps. Good for them, uh, working on our new projects. Uh, but we pre recorded the session last week. Uh, have fun, enjoy, and I'll be back here later for the QA. Welcome, Koji and Eche. Welcome to the panel of Bulado. Uh, to kick off, I would first like to introduce today's wonderful guests. Um, first, I'm very pleased to introduce Eche Yanga, uh, the director of Bulado. Hi, Eche. Hi, Eche. Um, Eche graduated from the Netherlands Film Academy in 2010. Uh, with his prize winning film, Mo. And after directing many short films, um, Younger debuted his future film, Halion, at the 2014 International Film Festival of Rotterdam, where he won two national film awards. Boulado, his last feature film, was released in 2021. Um, um, hello, Eche. We're going to talk about the film much more later on. <laughs> Welcome. Um, and it's my pleasure to introduce the following guest, Koji Nelison. Uh, Koji Nelison is a producer based in Amsterdam, uh, both credits include Oscar-nominated films as The Lobster and Bullhead. And in 2016, he co-founded Kepler Film with Derek Jan Waring, uh, which has produced Catastrophe, Talking Heads, and Boulado. Um, the first feature film was shot entirely in Curaçao. Uh, welcome, Koji. Thank you. Um, well, Boulado is the film we're going to talk about today, of course. And it's a great feature-length film from director Jay Yanga, written by Esther Duitsker and produced by Kepler Film in the Netherlands. And it's about the introverted but independent girl Kenza, who's caught between her straightforward, strict father and her spiritual, imaginative grandfather. Both men approach life and death in their own way. Now Kenza is older, she wonders how she would deal with grief and a major loss. Jay and Esther participated with the film in the Syndicate Script Lab 2018 and 19. Uh, the film was released in 2020 and the Netherlands Film Festival as opening film, where it was released at 100 theaters at the same time. 100, right? That was correct. Um, it was a Dutch submission for the Oscars and is now released on, the net, on Netflix in the Benelux. Um, great to have you guys. Uh, Jay, to start with you. Can you tell a little bit about the roads as this story took shape for you? 
And um, how did you consider what you want to represent about your own lived experiences, about your relationship to Curacao, the Netherlands, and its history? Um, um, and can you tell a little bit about that? Well, okay, I grew up with my mother. My mother is from the Netherlands and my father's from the island Curacao. Um, uh, this story I wanted to make, uh, the story I, I had in mind for, um, I think for almost uh, 15 years now. So in the beginning, when I went to the film school, I, I didn't dare to make this uh, a movie because I didn't have enough experience to, I, I thought I didn't have uh, enough experience to, um, to uh, direct this one because it's pretty difficult to shoot a film uh, outside the Netherlands. And it's also difficult for me because I wasn't born there. I was raised in the Netherlands and I had the feeling I had to um, yeah, learn more about the island than my own family, uh, which the, the story is uh, partly based on. Um, so yeah, it took a lo long time before I uh, stepped to uh, Esther, who co-writes uh, uh, the film, and uh, to Koji and uh, Derek Jan, who are the starters of Kepler Film, who produced the film. So yeah, it took took me for like 15 years before I uh, I dared to make this one. But um, yeah, it was a pretty pretty nice collaboration between uh, Kepler and uh, Esther. So. No problems there. Um, the shooting on the island it was was a bit uh, 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 different than I was used to in the Netherlands because in the Netherlands we have like a lot of uh, equipment and a lot of fund rate uh, fundings to to make a film. And on Curacao there's uh, really small, almost no film industry yet. So um, so it was an, uh, a great experience and. Uh, and an adventure to make this one over there. Yeah, and coming back to the story, perhaps thinking back to your, your younger self, did any of what you watched and read see um, or see and not see in terms of story and representation shape your approach in this work or your own work? Uh, one thing is for sure is that uh, the South American or the Caribbean culture uh, you will find much more like spiritual um, stories and beliefs and religions, um, tribal um, spiritual religions, than you will find in the Netherlands. So, uh, like the Netherlands, the, the Dutch culture is more like a sober, sober culture, and the Caribbean culture is more uh, spiritual. So, for this story, of course, it it's it's something you you won't uh, find uh, that, that easy in the Netherlands in the in the Dutch film uh, uh, industry. So um, yeah, that, that's 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 different about it. But I didn't make this film because of I uh, I wanted to make something different. It's just something I want to make for a long time because of my father is from the island. So he he raised me in a different kind of way that uh, maybe some father from the Netherlands would uh, raise his kid. So in that way, it was more natural for me to, to make a film about uh, a spiritual um, belief um, than, 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 than I would uh, pick this topic because um, it's something I wouldn't find in the Netherlands, something like yeah. that. Yeah. For, so for me, it was more natural, and and uh, I like the difference between the Dutch culture and the the Curacao uh, of Caribbean culture, and also um, the resembles because, uh, of course, it's a former colony of the of the Netherlands. So um, that's that's why uh, that's why it's interesting. I think also for Dutch people. Yeah. Yeah, and then maybe maybe in addition to that, I think. I think it's really interesting to see that the the the, the large amount of the audience uh, has a certain image of how Cura, how the island of Curacao is, and they only know it from the white beaches and the beautiful palm trees and, and things like that. And of course, uh, it is a country with with its own culture, and nobody actually really knows what's behind those beautiful touristic scene, scenes. And there's there's really a lot more than 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 uh, what you can see on the first eye, so to say. 
And I think that was really, uh, that's something where Etje really succeeded to show another side of the island and another side of, of people living on the island and, and the, the daily, uh, day-to-day problems they were facing, but also, also uh, uh, a lot of, um, um, how do you say, context around the background of the colonial background of the island. And, and the Jay, was it also something you discovered during, uh, be, because you you were there for quite some period, you were there a few times, and especially for a longer time during the shooting. Uh, did some did there some elements changed while being there? Like, uh, what did you were you confronted with things that weren't in script or in the story yet while being there? Well, uh, mainly uh, um, script wise, a lot of things changed because. In the script, we had a lot of dialogue, and the girl uh, who's playing Kensa, Tiara Richards, she was giving me so much with her um, with her acting. So uh, every day we just deleted a lot of sentences because um, she already gave so much by the way she um, um, performed. Performed. Yeah. Or performed. performed. Yeah, by the way, she performed. So she was a really strong uh, actor. So I think uh, that was the biggest uh, change um, I made on the set. So I also understood from our previous conversation that the, also the component of the, because it started when you also entered the lab, of course, you started really focusing on a child perspective, right? It was really focusing on the child, on the child, and it was also about being a children's film in a way. Yeah. And that also shifted over the process, right? Um, uh, well, the, the funny thing is that this, the, uh, and that's always like, uh, 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 it's always debatable wh whether uh, a child perspective makes it automatically a, a children's film. Yeah. And that was actually the discussion we had from the very early stage. Uh, we, we, the film was supported by a special uh, scheme called Cinema Junior, uh, a collaboration between the Netherlands Film Fund and the public broadcasters here in Holland. And uh, through this scheme, this film was actually mostly funded, uh, while actually the, the, the scheme is, is uh, primarily there for uh, family entertainment, family film. Uh, and of course, they are looking for more edgy type of projects and, and, and which have more artistic value rather than the, the more mainstream type of uh, feature films. Uh, but actually throughout the process, we started to realize more and more that even though the perspective is from, from a child, uh, this is a, such a universal story. It's not really, uh, you cannot really label it, label it as a family film or a children's film in that sense. Because because it's it's about uh, more universal themes than 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 which only which doesn't only affect children it affects everyone. Yeah, and also coming back to that because why why was it for you important uh, Jay to tell it from Kenza's uh, perspective from her as a child being a child? Well, it was because when I was eight, I had. Um... Uh, well, I was really curious about death and what, what happens after life and I didn't have a grandmother, I didn't have a grandfather, but uh, I visit um, uh, their graves uh, often, but um, I, I didn't know what it was, so for me the film was always about her because uh, it, it, she remembered me uh, to uh, a younger self of me. Of, uh, to, 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 when, God, oh, uh, to when I was a child. So for me, it was some, um, yeah, that was only logical. So it would be go, it would be uh, about cancer. Yeah. And, and coming, ba coming back to what you just mentioned briefly already, Koji, um, what to you guys, uh, Jay and Koji, what, what do you think is considered a need that it worked for a young audience or a children's film? What do you think is important? Well, I there? saw the film um, uh, Beast of the Southern Wild. It's an uh, American uh, movie yeah. uh, in the United States. And it's actually, it, it's, it's not a children's movie, but uh, there's a girl, she's, I think she's like six or seven years old in this film. And uh, when I uh, was reading the reviews on the internet, a lot of children responded with, uh, 
I don't get the whole story, but uh, I found it uh, really interesting to, to watch this film, although I didn't get the whole uh, plot, but um, but I think it's a cool movie. And it, th those are children of like 10 or 11 years old. So, uh, and I, when I was a kid, I liked um, uh, The Never Ending Story, this film. I, it, I liked it really much and I didn't get it at all because I, I, I um, I couldn't understand the uh, the film, but but it always stayed in my mind. So that's that's why I think children, uh, uh, yeah, they, they they can get it but without getting all of it. I think, and I think this is the same with this film. The topic, yes. like um, it has to trigger them in one way or the other. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think yeah, it's I think as long as it has like multi layers in the story where where they can connect to one of the few one of the uh, layers which is there, then then for any child it's actually is accessible. Of course, I wouldn't say this is a preschool type of film, but but a, but a, a regular child at the age of eight or ten years old can quite understand this film. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I think there's uh, definitely certain elements they can connect to in that sense. I mean. Yeah. Everybody, uh, also young children, are facing at a certain moment with death uh, and and rebirth or or things like that. So so uh, and and also facing uh, how do you say loss of of uh, uh, family, uh, reconnect with family, uh, and and uh, and I think that's important. And I, in that sense, we should not consider children as. Um, as uh, how do you say uh, very vulnerable oh, yeah. type of creatures, which we can we can only uh, uh, show really soft, easy going uh, 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 Disney type of film, so to say. But they can they they really I think they have a strong imagination and they can really affect it to to a lot of type type of content. And we we are working currently on another film, and we we are realizing that when we show the film to people from the age of 50 or 60 up that they they really have difficulties with connecting the film and we did a couple of test screenings with with the schools and the children they 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 completely went wild already about the film so they they can handle a lot more than we actually think and it's i think it's important that as all the adults we of course we we try to to how do you say to trigger them to think in a in a different way, or we, we try to poke them in a kind of way, but we should always approach them as, uh, as in a kind of way as adults as well, because as they, human beings. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They, yeah. They such a such a wide a wider uh, uh, sense of imagination. Uh, they they can much better. Uh, uh, Real, uh, 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 Oh, uh, relate? No. no. <laughs> relate? No. Uh, sorry. <laughs> they can they can much easier put things in context that in context yeah. as, uh, as we adults sometimes think, yeah. and, and 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 that's really that's something where we can learn from as filmmakers. I think. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's also about I think that's what's happening in the Netherlands for the, they have quite a tendency yeah, with, uh, with television and also with films to take them quite seriously indeed like with subjects and yeah. um, uh, we're not afraid we don't shy away from certain subjects I think uh, and, and I think what's important indeed to take this audience seriously I think uh, that we can agree upon that and I think also uh, um, I think it's important to uh, to realize, uh, well, there's also a question actually for you, Jay, because you made, uh, and I also think I heard you say that one time, Cody, that there's a lot of freedom also in creating for a younger audience. Um, um, do you see that as, do you feel it as well? Is there, is there more freedom in, in creating for a younger audience or for an adult audience, or is that? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't, this was the first film I made for a younger yeah. audience, but. Um, it depends when you're, yeah, you want, if you want to make fish fly and make it believable, then yeah, then it's better. Then, then you have more freedom uh, making a film for children. But um, actually, I'm writing now on another film and 
I, I'm also thinking about uh, this magic realism to, uh, I wanted to use it also in, in the film for older people. So for me as a filmmaker, I don't, um, I don't mind using like a big uh, portion of fantasy in, uh, in films. Yeah. So, and for you, it's, there's no real difference. It's about the story, of course, you want to portray, you want to tell. Um, and the audience it comes in mind later, I think, right? It's about the story in principle. Yeah. And yeah. And yeah. It's the message in, like in the Caribbean culture, you have lots of stories where things happen or people believe in stuff uh, where we in the Western world uh, don't believe in. But um, it's not then it's not about uh, if is it true or false, but it's about uh, the message, which which is between in between the the, uh, the lines so yeah that's yeah. more important i think so yeah and how is that for you koji also because you were working on you working on both productions for children uh, and for adults how, how does it feel for you as a producer do you feel there's any other except for budgets maybe <laughs> any other approaches to that to, to, to how do you feel well well, what, what is what is uh, I think certainly different is that 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 you you have more uh, freedom in the sense of use, uh, creating worlds or creating fa using fantasy in the in the films mm -hmm. and uh, to you to really play with the imagination of, the, of your audience and <clears throat> with with an adult audience it's it's uh, often a little bit more difficult to to take them into your world you created mm. so you really have to use different ways to 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 engage with them so to say i think uh, however uh we i think most of the people who, who see films uh, who see movies they they really like to to be taken away into a different world mm. era uh age or whatever just to to escape also from the daily routine and and uh, and to be to be entertained in a certain way and also to to be to be challenged or or uh, to be uh, uh confronted with with uh, uh with things which are happening in society and maybe even mirrored in that sense so uh but i think what is interesting with children they 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 take it a, li a little bit more easy, so to say. So, so uh, even though we should take them very seriously in that sense, I mean, it's not that they, that you easily grab them, so to say, uh, in that sense, but uh, they, I think they have a stronger imagination and maybe it has to do with that, that I think if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, uh, at the age of six or seven, you realize the difference, really realize the difference between the reality and, and the fantasy. Mm. So when you're making films for children, they are still close to that, much closer than we adults to the fantasy world, so to say. Mm -hmm. So it's more easy for them to relate to it as well, I guess. Mm. Mm. Um, coming a little bit back to, to the production yeah. part or the shooting part also, um, can you, uh, both from your perspective, maybe tell us a little bit about filming on Curacao on the island and getting starting, getting started working with um, the production departments there, considering also um, uh, working with the cast there. Can you tell us a little bit about that process um, and how that was for you? Um, well, the production process, like finding locations was really easy because almost everything is beautiful over there. So um, that was mm -hmm. nice. And uh, finding the girl, finding Kenza was also a great uh, ride because um, yeah, the, the children had a lot of t uh, talent uh, on the island. And, uh, but of course, because we live in the Netherlands, we had to fly uh, on and off to the island to, to find her. So that happened a couple of times, but uh, Tiara was like, um, ob obviously the best and she was really good. And in the process of casting, she was, she went so into her role that she almost forgot that she was acting and, and the real emotions came up and she almost started crying because she had to do a really difficult scene and, um, and, and she went like, uh, to the moon with that. And that was, uh, was really nice to see um the production in on the island we already knew it would be 
uh, very uh, warm and hot uh, during the day. So uh, the most important scenes we had to do in the morning or in uh, the beginning of the evening. So that was kind of difficult and new for us. Um, everything is, uh, uh, is moving a bit slower, of course, because it's almost 30 degrees every day or more. Um, and the sun drops uh, really quick. So yeah, you have, all, you, have, you have no magic hour, but you have like a magic minute. So it's the, those are things you, we had to pre prepare for. Uh, but uh, luckily, the, the, the crew over there from the island was uh, um, really nice to work with. And they were really good and helped us out with these differences between filming in the Netherlands and Curacao. So we had, they had a lot of experience uh, uh, with this. Um, so and, and I also, uh, together with the, the DOP, uh, Greg Toulouse, we made a plan to shoot with uh, less um, equipment in the sentence of a grip. So that's like uh, movements of the camera and all, and all those kind of stuff. So we, we, we kept it basic and that, uh, that worked out really fine because um, now we could move uh, um, a lot quicker and uh, the actors could, yeah, you could perform like uh, the way they wanted. We didn't have to wait all the time on us. We can, we can move around. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I really like the the way of working on, on the island. Yeah, I really like that. Yeah, it, it it learned me also that it's not all about aesthetics of, of uh, a shot. It's uh, you can you can uh, accomplish it way more by uh, making yourself light and movable. And uh, yeah, yeah. So it, yeah. it was for me it was uh, it was it was really nice. Yeah. And how long did the shooting take to place in total? I forgot. I think it's about thirty. Cozy. We had, a, we had about thirty shooting days. Uh, thirty, 30. shooting days 30, yeah. it was uh, spread out to two months, a period of two months. Yeah, and the casting process. You went there. It took place over there as well before. But uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It took took place over there. So we went there two or three times. Uh, also for scouting locations and yeah. scouting the, the, the actors. Like to, uh, the father, he came from the Netherlands, but he's, uh, he was born on the island. And so was uh, the grandfather. He also lived in the Netherlands, but he is also uh, from, from the island uh, originally. Yeah. But, the, but the girl still lives there and was born there. And yeah, we, yeah. we did come there with that. And how is it for you as a producer, Koji? Uh, because it's the first, in, yeah, international co-production, right, with Curacao. So, how was it from your side? Well, it's, <clears throat> first of all, it, it, uh, when we started the film, we knew the budget would be very limited to to uh, where we had to work with, uh, and uh, we had to take in consideration, even though the the where uh, uh, there is a very small uh, film film industry in the island, it, it is very limited in that sense, and and. What we realized is that we really had to bring quite a lot of people from from Holland, uh, uh, at least the head, head of heads of department, at least heads of department. But uh, funny enough, we, or funny enough, uh, we we were really happy actually with the uh, with the amount of motivation and and uh, and eagerness uh, of the people on the island to work on this project and and. Because maybe they they didn't were not experienced so experienced, but they really balanced that out with with their with their uh, positive energy and eagerness to 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 really learn and to 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 make this project uh, incredible, and that was something which which really succeeded. I mean, uh, from the, from the moment we started uh, uh, in pre production, the whole crew was one big family, and and up till today. Uh, there has been messages going back and forth in the in the uh, WhatsApp groups. Uh, we are having uh, uh, celebrating uh, the film or celebrating someone's birthday or whatever. But the the the, the it, it everybody became such a big family, and we really gained a lot of friends there. Actually, um, of course, it was when we when we arrived at the island. There's there's not a lot of film infrastructure, so to say. So, uh, like a Che uh, was mentioning, uh, a Che and uh, and Greg, they decided to to 
to make a different approach on how to make the film cinematography, how to do the cinematography of the film. So uh, using uh, no grip, uh, using a, a limited amount of, uh, of lights and really work with a lot of practical lights. So like existing light sources, so to say. Uh, but that also gave the, the 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 vibe of the film really that that the the the, the crispiness we were actually looking for, I think. And um, I, I was I was actually really amazed of what we what we were uh, able to 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 shoot there and what we were able to make uh, uh, throughout the process. Uh, with this limited amount of budget, but I mean, everybody worked really incredibly hard for for this project, and it was we are we are really grateful for that as well. I mean, it was it was a huge experience. Was the film eventually also released on the island? Did the, yeah. yeah, yeah, we we released it first in the Netherlands, uh, and that was actually. Uh, quite a challenge because that was uh, 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 in the beginning of no, in the end of September when COVID was just uh, uh, firing up again. Yeah. yeah, firing up again. So uh, we had our official premiere here in the Netherlands, and then we were trying to schedule a premiere in Curaçao, and uh, the film was being released in the Netherlands, but. Uh, I think uh, one week after we released the film, the cinemas really had to limit their amount of seats available per, per theater to I think maximum of 30 persons. So um, that was that was uh, uh, quite a challenge. Uh, funny enough, the film was sold out all the time because, because I think also because there were a limited amount of chairs available uh, due to COVID. Uh, and then uh, I think the theaters closed in the Netherlands in the, I think it was half of November. Yeah. Around that period. And we released the film in, uh, in Curaçao uh, at the end of November. And that was like one big, big event where the, I think the whole islands knew about this film and, and were celebrating the film. Uh, I think members of parliament were there, the, 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 the governor of the island was there, the, the, uh, there were so many people who had an important role on the island, but also the location holders, the, the, the extras, the, all the cast and crew who worked on the film was there. So it was really like one big uh, uh, festivity where we all celebrated the, 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 the the really first Papiament to spoken film on, from the island, so to say. Yeah. It was really incredible. How uh, were the responses from the community there? And uh, they were celebrating, of course, uh, and then, uh, but how uh, did you talk to many people who, who weren't involved in the process, but also were, how, how for responses from the public there? Well, uh, we get a lot of positive responses, but especially uh, the most responses I, I did uh, get was from um, people uh, who were uh, born on the island mm -hmm. but uh, are now living in the Netherlands because they they felt like they were uh, yeah they, they, they missed the island so much that um, they were really glad to see yeah, a part of their culture and a part of the island uh, in the Netherlands so they they felt the warmth of uh, Curacao in the, back in the Netherlands and so up till today I get uh, um, via Facebook, um, a lot of messages and responses about uh, how, how how nice of uh, how warm the film uh, is for them. So that that is really nice and um, Not warm, yeah, and yeah. it's now pure sound Netflix. So um, hmm. yeah, so, so that, that since since like a month or two, uh, yeah, wonder, it's now on Netflix pure sound also. So. Oh great, yeah, yeah. Um, of course, in the Netherlands, we have a very big tendency in international co-production. It's, uh, it's a way we make a lot of films. Um, uh, how does that commit to more diverse storytelling? Uh, I think it's nice to hear from, from you or Koji. And are there, um, besides this film, I think best practices from, from, uh, from that people can learn from? I think in the, in the, in, in the US, of course, also, there's not very common, of course, to co-produce, but um and how is it also helping uh yeah to diversify the storytelling in, in in the world um 
how does does that help in the international co-production policy uh, uh, or strategy? I must say. Well, what 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 we start to realize more and more is that how uh, the more local the, the story is, the more universal it is. So so uh, really people really. Uh, seek out for for stories where they can really be taken into a different world or a different uh, uh, era where they see different things they haven't, haven't seen before and um, in terms of co-production how i would persuade is that the the the, the most valuable thing of co-production is sharing talent i think mm. uh, and and maybe also sharing stories but but sharing talent is, I think, one of the, for us, the primary focus of why we co-produce. Mm -hmm. Because we, it gives us a challenge to, uh, the, the, it gives us the chance to, to, to work with a, a cinematographer from, I don't know, uh, from Slovenia, or it gives us the chance to work with a director, art director from, from uh, France or whatever. And, and I think that's really valuable, at least for European cinema, that we collaborate in that sense. And by co-producing, we also create more um, visibility for the project uh, we are the projects we are creating. So for us, that's that's of huge uh, value and importance because the more visibility you have uh, across the world, the more engagement you can have with your audience. And and uh, I mean. When I started my career, I've done very local TV movies, and you know, after one run, nobody will ever see this film again. And and that's really cool about about working uh, on, on on feature films where you can really uh, tell universal stories, uh, show people in the whole world a different perspective uh, uh, from life as as they know it, and and and. Uh, show them that collaboration between uh, talent uh, in front of the camera and also behind the camera. It's it's uh, that really makes stories stronger. All right. So sorry about that. Um, just switching over from that fantastic conversation um, uh, with Nienka and Koji and Eche. Um, really great, so much to talk and think about. And thank you, Nienke, for um, hosting that really wonderful conversation. Um, we're pleased to have you back and also to be inviting uh, Jean-Charles and Guillaume to rejoin us. Um, and we got some great questions from the audience. So if you will just give me a moment, I'm gonna open up our Q&A and field some of them for you. Um, let's see, okay. Uh, I think I'm going to start with a question from uh, Kylan. And Kylan asks, what do you think the most important elements of successful collaboration in film and storytelling are? So I think that each of you can speak to that in your different roles. Um, Yanka, maybe do you want to start? And then we'll talk about you, Jean-Charles and Guillaume, who spoke so beautifully about some aspects of that. So Yanka. Oh. Microphone back on, please. I'm muted. Oh my, beginner's mistake. Yeah, I think Sean Charles so and Guillaume uh, can talk about that much better than I do because they are filmmakers. And uh, but uh, coming from what Koji also mentioned in the video, I think, and Jay as well, I think it's really about trusting your collaboration with the team. I think, um, yeah, uh, working together. Uh, maybe as a writer director or with your writer, I think uh, having a re relationship that really based on trust and, and 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 trusting each other in what you do as a different your different role in the, in 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 the in the project, but also really believing in the project. Of course, I think that's where, that's where it starts, and having that uh, yeah elevates to a great uh, collaboration. And I think also in the, we also stepped into that a little bit during the conversation. International co-production also really. Uh, helps to to add elements and stories that that I think can diversify the story. But I think it's all about a a, a fruitful and, and trustworthy relationship within the crew and uh, and cast. I think, but that's my perspective. What I heard from a lot of filmmakers. 
Thanks, Bianca. Um, and I think you're very modest because you know you're really involved in those um, production labs through Syndicate. So um, it's great to have your perspective. Um, Jean Charles and Guillaume, um, you two uh, clearly, I think our audience has been able to appreciate uh, the dynamic that you have and the ways that you balance each other. Um, and maybe you can also answer in that question um, how you take kind of that. Um, that spirit and the the ways that you figured out your relationship to collaborate with this you know enormous team that it takes to to create a film and especially animation um and since you don't like to decide who votes first i'm gonna pick you guillaume and jean charles if you would if that's okay hello oh guillaume you're muted tell us again introduce again okay okay I wanted to introduce my mom, which is a big part of why I made this film. So I wanted all to know her because she's my biggest inspiration and she's the woman behind you, everything, even my birth. <laughs> so yeah, I wanted all to see the face of beauty that she is. Lovely, thank <laughs> Just you so quick much. Introducing. <laughs> yes, so, um, so is Jean-Charles here? I didn't, I didn't see, yeah, cool. Um, uh, okay, so I just wanted to say that for me, the, the key of I don't know if it's success, but what I think is very important to make films is when you agree on the on the basic uh, on the main main theme of what you're talking about. You know the story, what it is really about. If everyone agrees on that, then it's gonna go further. And I think this is this helps a lot, especially if the people who wrote the stories went through those themes. You know, if and if they experienced this, if they experienced it themselves, then the honesty and the authenticity of what you're gonna say. Is, is supposed to touch people right in the heart because we all go through unique experiences and this uniqueness, which is also lived differently by a lot of other people. This is how it works, I guess, I would say. What do you think you say? <laughs> You're mute. Sorry. I thought, I thought I, I, sorry. Yeah, so I was about to say that everything has been said i think and um yeah i, I truly agree on the fact that um, we just need to connect on the roots of what we want to say and what we really want to talk about because um and this happened to me before uh as the team i, I mean the bigger the team the bigger uh, the point of views, I think, and uh, from the pro the producer to the director to the writers, and uh, you know, it's a bunch of uh, personal drives, I think. And sometimes we wouldn't meet uh, at every tiny points or bits, or and I think it's uh, something that really needs to to be uh, I don't know uh, addressed, I guess, and the, the being an author and also a director, I mean, to me, it's something very, very important. That's what I found in Guillaume is because when you really meet someone that has something to say, he can really uh, give you his vision. And the vision, I think, drives everything from the storytelling to, I mean, from the story to the meaning of the story. Uh, to the storytelling, to the animation, to the colors and whatever, everything needs to, to, to be really uh, uh, focused on the target. That's very, very simple is the, the vision uh, of the author. Um, yeah, I guess. Nice, yeah. That makes sense. Um, I have a great question from Ellen for um, both of the uh, films, and I think Yankee, you can also speak to this. Um, both these films have such strong girl leads. <laughs> Did you have women working on these productions as well and in what capacities? Um, Nika, do you want to start um, by speaking to the development of Burado? Uh, yeah, I know for sure, of course, uh, the screenwriter, Esther Duisker, she is a woman. Um, uh, Jay really wrote the story with her. Um, and she was also really involved later on, actually during that the whole process, which is quite unique for a screenwriter, I think, but she was involved even during the editing. Um, H.J. Was, was discussing uh, certain choices with her and she was really involved. And of course, also in the further cast and, and uh, uh, 
there were women involved in the production, definitely. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Fantastic, nice to have that voice in there. And then um, for Vani, uh, we had the pleasure of seeing where it all began with uh, Mom Guillaume. Uh -huh. um, so uh, we are all grateful for uh, your uh, shout out to Mothers Everywhere um, for that inspiration and really thinking about, you know, digging into your family story, but also um, I understand there's some uh, co-writing that also happened for you all. So I just love to hear um, for your, from your perspective, you wanna start um, how, how uh, sort of a, a, a women identified voice came into the storyline. Oh, and you're muted. Okay, again, okay, sorry. So I didn't have the, the, the uh, I didn't write the script alone. I had the, the first idea, yes, and I wrote, I wrote something. But then I, I was helped by a friend who's also from the Caribbean. Her name is Aurore Auguste and she co-wrote the scenario with me along with another, another friend who was called Antoine Nancio and the three of us rewrote the story. But Aurore was there before him and I needed her to be there because she was also from the Caribbean. And also as a woman, she could tell if the main character reaction seems uh, right, you know, for her. Like, because sometimes I would, in the beginning, Vani would be very boyish, very, very, very boyish. And I think she found the, the good balance in between uh, still not being like too girly, but like find a good balance. And her presence was very uh, important because she wrote a lot of, this, of the dialogue and that was very important for us. And also uh, during the whole process of the film, we tried with Jean-Charles to have a, a equal, uh, how do you say in English, parity? Like, like you know, uh, same amount of men as same amount of women on the team. That was very well, important. Well, that's right, yeah, us. you have really great, um, really great and um, clearly defined things in France in terms of parody, right? Of, you know, the 50-50 yes. AM with women in animation. Exactly, yes, yes. And it was important for us to work on that. And of course, the I would say the, the voices, like the, 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 the actress who gave a lot of themselves in the film and actually they like especially one of them is she's a singer she's the auntie frederic who welcome vanille in the caribbean and since she joined the, the film the film took um, another another step you know she really brought in her experience also as a woman her and she was also very critic <laughs> critical about some stuff and we managed to 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 take that in and she was very inspirational too you know and uh, yes and um, and i would like to say shout out also to all the women in my family because they're the one who gave me really as inspiration for this film. All the characters have something of them everywhere. And yeah, I was mostly raised by a woman. So um, I'm really thankful for that. And I wanted to show that in the film, you know, I wanted to, to give them also a place. And I, 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 will, I wanted to make sure that women would also participate in the making of the film because it's also most of all their story, right? So, yeah. Fantastic. Did you have anything you wanted to add there, Jean-Charles? No, no, I think he's, he said everything. Okay, fantastic. Um, let's see, let me pull some more out. Uh, we probably have time for maybe one more. So let me find a good one that applies. I do have um, a few different questions from um, Yais, uh, if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, and apologies if not, um, who is interested in a really specific um, production questions. Um, maybe uh, Jean-Charles and Guillaume, you can answer um, a little bit about um, whether uh, prospective residents at Folimage are expected to come with the formal animation experience in animation. Is everybody there already sort of um, very accomplished in terms of their animation? Or uh, are, do you also kind of develop strong pitches that don't necessarily come from animation? Uh, can you repeat the question again? Sure. Please, I'm not sure <laughs> that I really you, it, and it's okay. And we will uh, we will send this to uh, Regina if uh, it's not in your wheelhouse. Do you need uh, in-depth animation experience to do any kind of residency at Folimaj, or do you oh, also okay. work at like on strong pitches that maybe aren't from someone who has an animation background? Um, I guess from what I've understand, but I think um, there need. Um, change a bit from year to year so uh, I'm not really uh, the right person to answer but I think uh, you should have uh, a background of animation because you're supposed to understand I guess uh, what uh, 
our direction means, what the cost means, um, the storytelling and everything. So you, you don't necessarily need to be an animator, but you, I think you should have a, a background of um, art direction or animation in a way. Uh, but all the teams at Fall Image, uh, from what I understand, are supposed to be uh, at your service, kind of. So you have uh, animators, you can get storyboarders or lots of people that can uh, work with you to build a better movie, mm. to build the, the, the movie. So maybe if you just, I don't know, actually, I think you, you need to have a background, but if you have a very good script or a good pitch, you can maybe go through the first phase and they can arrange something for you to have a, I don't know, technical director or something. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll make sure to um, send that over to Foley Marsh so that yeah. they can sort of... Um, uh, but maybe Guillaume, you can say something something about like, it. Yeah, yeah. as you said, like the, the people who came in residency had very different uh, backgrounds. And and uh, so some were very strong in animation, other very strong in backgrounds, other very, ground, uh, very strong in, uh, I don't know, uh, other stuff. But I think, I think you kind of need to know because you have to do it in one year. Even though it's yeah. only five minutes long, wow. it's very you have a very short time to do it. So it's maybe it's best if you have a little bit of experience. But as Jean Charles said, it's true that a lot of people work on your film and they're really qualified. They they know, and they've been through the this experience already. So you can be helped. I guess if you have a really great pitch, and you really want to make this animation, you can still send it to Folima, and maybe they will give you a co-director. Which means that you be, maybe you remain the author, the main author, but then you have a co-director, and then together you make the film. If you don't know anything about animation, that could be possible, I guess. But I wouldn't speak for them because you know we we made this film with Folimage, but we are not at Folimage. I mean, we don't yeah, belong. Yeah, exactly. Yes. No Folimage, worries. Um, very free. Maybe yeah, we'll yeah. just move it over to a, a more broad question, which was a lot of love for Vani and for Boulevo, wow, um, and. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the kind of storytelling that's represented and also um, folks wanting to ask, you know, as someone just beginning um, in animation and film and uh, storytelling, how do I get my stories out into the world? Just a very broad, like, how do you, how do you kind of support people, um, you know, having the confidence to kind of take a step out into the world and share that? I'd like to start first because I Excellent. have something to say <laughs> for once. Um, actually, I came, I came uh, in Paul Image, it was 2010, I think, uh, to work as a background uh, lead on the feature film. And I met Guillaume, who uh, was still at La Poudrière at the time, uh, that's the, the um, uh, directing school. Um, and uh, the first week, I guess, uh, I was welcomed there and uh, he approached me and asked, stuff like life and we started to to talk and um, he said oh do you write or do you paint or do you have any project that that you'd like to you know promote or whatever and i was like yeah i have this film but i'm not sure and it's complicated to write and blah 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 and um he managed to get me to sh to show him some picture that i did and uh, it was like oh okay you really, really need to do it. And uh, I'd say one year later, I was trying to pitch this film. Two years after that, uh, we started the production. He was animator on the film. And uh, yeah, that's how we started. So I guess if anybody needs to uh, create a film, <laughs> you need to meet Guillaume. <laughs> 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 call him and uh, go to Guadeloupe and hang out with, with the guy. No, no, no. I mean, uh, free, I think free. Uh, the, 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 what I want, what, where I'm heading with this is just um, hanging with people that are, um, I can't find my words. And as you can see, it's night now. So it's going to be more difficult for me to talk, but um, <laughs> um, yeah, funny. just find find the, the, the right people uh, to, uh, to 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 be with, um, and those people are gonna give you the strength and just to say, you know, you can uh, try this or try that, and just 
write and draw and do it, the, the things that you want to do. And I know it's, it, it sounds really simple. And like, uh, if you want to do it, you can do it. That's not really what I'm saying. But it's just that if you really want to do stuff, you, you, you should uh, surround yourself with people that are willing to give you the push, I think. Um, so that would be the first step. And then, you know, of course, having a good drawing, having a good uh, idea of storytelling, being aware and look around for good stories and good movements, I don't know, but I, I, I start with this. Meet Guillaume <laughs> and then everything's gonna be fine. Oh, that's fantastic, yeah. Can find, find, your, find your people um, that will inspire and push you a little bit. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, I would like, I would just I'd like to, to add, um, uh, thank you, Jean-Charles, you're crazy. I didn't remember that at all. I'm sure you made that up. And, uh, <laughs> and the thing is um, to also feed yourself, feed yourself with what you love most and do not hesitate to really read, watch movies, uh, go outside, go where you feel inspired. If you're attracted to something, go for it and take the time to do it for real. Uh, this is what helped me the most. I had to like, sometimes I was really attracted to the forest and I wouldn't do it because of many stuff. And when I decided I would go, I got so much inspired. So you, I think we really need to feed ourselves with our surroundings, people around us so, uh, inspire us too. And, uh, and when you feel you're ready, only when you feel you're ready, you, you, you start share with people that you think are gonna give you a push, as you say, Jean-Charles. Like when you feel you, you have, you're strong enough with what you wanna say, then people can have something to bounce from and, and to give you help from that. And I don't know where you are, if you're in the US, I don't know how it works, but in France, you can get money from the government to just write your story. So maybe look for like a funds where if you have funds just for the hotels to have money to help you start because it's not easy to just write. And, and I guess France is a very special country for that because it really helps a lot of people without producers, like just yourself, you can get money to write your story if, it, if, they, if they think it's good enough. But still yeah, sure. try to find funds. Yeah, <laughs> try to find funds. Um, maybe, uh, how do you say in English? Uh, um, people who give you money just for, because they like you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> it doesn't yeah. exist <laughs> it doesn't exist you right? don't get money yeah. to just write your story no but uh, it's you raise a very good point you know obviously things are very different here and i think you know um uh in the netherlands and france you have the fortune to really um have you know the the True that. your government have the foresight to know how important arts and culture are and to support it here we have a slightly more challenging environment, but also I want to invite people to come to next week's panel where we're going to talk about funding. There are resources, there are different ways to get nice. support. Nice. So thank you. Great. That's a great segue and inspiring too to think about you know your surroundings and that that fuels mm -hmm. you, your environment fuels you. Exactly. Um, and Nienke, I'm going to ask you to close it out if you would. You know you have a really great. Um, ability i've been at cine kid you create such a welcoming and warm environment for um filmmakers um so maybe you can talk about you know what you think um can support um somebody who's you know just taking their first step to have the confidence to go out there and, and share their work yeah i think what john charles and guillaume are saying is is really on spot on <laughs> i must say uh, i think surround yourself with 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 the people that also believe in, in your story and um and i think festivals and also you maria and christina with new york children's festival and festival the markets can really help you to connect with people i think it's Making films is is is, is something uh, is, is something that people do, and we're it's a people's um, uh, game. And 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 I think um, yeah, I think we can help with that, and we're always happy to help with that. So even um, if we were always throughout the year during the festival, but also throughout the year, we we want to be there for makers and really stimulate them and try to help them connect to the right people. So. Uh, yeah, always you can always reach us at professionalcineke.nl. We will try to help you to find the right people or advise you um, maybe where to go or where to uh, specifically meet those people, and we can help with that. So 
uh, reach out to festivals. I think that's also really a, a, a crucial part. And, and of course, in the normal world, we, we, have, we have live festivals where we interact and meet a lot of people. Uh, there's drinks, you can uh, bump into people, but also um, well, throughout the year, we, we really want to help with that. So um, of course, we understand it. We're, we're in, yeah, in our country, we're privileged with certain fundings, especially for writing and for development and uh, also attending festivals even. But um, I think festivals and markets can really also help you meeting the right people. So reach out. And um, if not, we try to connect you to someone else who knows better. I think that's uh, a big part of the work we do and we want to do. Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Great advice. Thanks. And thanks for reiterating that. You know, we're here to, to support great art. We're fueled by the art that you make, Guillaume and Jean Charles. You did such a beautiful job with Vendy. It's really so, so warm and Thank lovely. And that, you know, as I said, like the, the story of, um, you know, um, kids coming to understand their identity is so important and it resonates in um, all kinds of different cultures and countries. So, Thank you. Um, we're here to Thank support and facilitate much. and make more great work. And you all have been so inspiring and I'm so appreciative. So thank, thank you, you thank all. You. Thank, thank you, you for much. staying thank up you. late. Jean Charles and Nienke <laughs> and Guillaume, thank you for uh, not being in that beautiful background, um, but I hope you get to it. Um, and everybody I'm out there. Lunch now. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Feed yourselves. Um, everybody thank out you, there, feed you. yourselves. Thank you for being here and check out next week's panel next Thursday on. Uh, funding for Kids Media. Thank you all and have a great day. Thank you, the thank festival, you, thank you. for this opportunity. Thank you again. It's really great. Thank you, thank so you much. Guillaume. Thank bye you, bye. everyone. Thank you, Jean-Charles. Thank you um, very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye, Guillaume. Jean-Charles. <laughs>